welcome, welcome back, bienvenue, and all that jazz. It's time to talk about the books that I'm hoping to get to in the month of December, so the final TBR of 2023. I am being rather ambitious with 10 books and 10 rather chunkier books, so wish me luck. But without further ado or preamble, let's just get into the books that I'm hoping to read. So first up, I would like to start The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. So if you don't know, I have been hosting for the last year or so a Cosmere Along Read Along that I'm hosting with Angela from Literature Science Alliance, Stephanie from Miss Richards Reads, and Jesse the, the Bookish Mom. And for the last year we've been doing all the non-Stormlight Cosmere books, and so now we are finally starting on the Stormlight Archive book so that we can be ready for hopefully a November 2024 release of book five in the Stormlight Archive. And so The Way of Kings, we are supposed to be reading um, until January, and then we'll have a discussion about it sometime in February. So there's still plenty of time to jump along with this read-along if you feel so inclined. But I read The Way of Kings a long time ago, and I remember bits and pieces. I remember one particular climactic moment towards the end, obviously, but the rest of it is a little bit hazier, so I'm really excited to go back and reread this book for the first time and hopefully pick up new things now that I have read everything else published in the Cosmere. Hopefully there's like new bits and bit bobs that I can kind of glean that I didn't see the first time. Then I'm also trying to get through some of the arcs that I have on NetGalley. So if you don't know, if you're any kind of like reviewer on Goodreads or YouTube or whatever, you can request advanced reading copies via a website known as NetGalley. And like many newer booktubers, I went ham in the beginning and so I'm still trying to get my review ratio back up. And so I would like to get through a lot of books that I had as arcs that have come out since then, but I can still go back and give feedback to hopefully get that review score back up. And so one of the things that I'd like to get to is Dark Star Burning Ash Falls White. This is by Amelie Wen Zhao. This is a book that's coming out on January 2nd of 2024, and it is book two. I don't know if it's a duology or a trilogy or what a, what's going on with it, but the first book was Song of Silver, Flame Like Night, and this is a young adult series very steeped in Chinese folklore and mythology, and the magic is built around kind of chi and a more martial arts based system, and it's just a lot of fun. There is a romantic element, but it's not at the forefront, like I think people tend to kind of stereotype YA as. And so even if you're not typically a YA reader and you're just looking for something more fast paced and fun with a lot of Chinese mythology, I don't think you can go wrong with Song of Silver, Flame Like Night. I'm really excited to continue on with that trilogy, series, duology, whatever it is, and read the next book. The next thing I'd like to get to is The Slain Divine, and this is by David Doglish. This is book three, the conclusion to the Vagrant Gods trilogy. Book one was The Bladed Faith, and so I have a full spoiler-free review for that on my channel that I will link above and below if you want more details on the first book. But I am so excited for the conclusion. This doesn't technically come out till sometime in January, but he was kind enough to send me an advanced reading copy of it. And so I just can't wait. This is really the kind of ultimate of the gods among us trope in this world. Each nation kind of has their own patron deities and these deities are real beings in the world. And there is this kind of god king from a different country that has been systematically killing them and kind of supplanting their peoples with religion worshiping him instead. And so there's kind of faith as magic as well as like gods among us and just it is so good. And so I can't wait to see what happens because there was a big reveal at the end of book two. And so I'm so excited to see where we go and how this concludes because I'm in my concluding series era. Then David also sent me a new series that he's starting called The Radiant King. And so that is book one in his new series. I don't know how many books it's gonna be or I don't really know any information about it. I just love the Vagrant Gods series so much that I'm curious to see what's next for him. And so I would also like to give that a gander. And then continuing along with my whole finishing things era, arc, whatever you want to call it, I would like to read The Deepest Blue by Sarah Beth Durst. This is a companion novel to the Queens of Renthia trilogy. So I have now finished that trilogy and I, this is the last book that's published in that world. I really don't know anything about it except it's like different characters, different everything. It's like just a companion novel set in the world. So I don't know if that's going to be good or bad or <laughs> or what because the ending of the Queens of Renthia trilogy was quite rushed and there was a lot of new elements built. So I'm curious to see if any of those elements are 
kind of expanded upon, even if it's not with the original cast of characters. I think that it would still be cool to expand on. The like spirit-based magic of this world is just so awesome. And so I'm just excited to spend a little bit more time in this world. And then similarly, another companion slash prequel novel in a different series is Her Radiant Curse by Elizabeth Lim. And so this fits in with the six crimson cranes. I'm, I think it was a duology. I've read both of them. And this is kind of a prequel following the evil queen and seeing kind of how she got to where she was. And this evil queen is the one who in Six Crimson Cranes curses the brothers and turns them into cranes and curses the main character so that she can't speak about them. Otherwise, one of them will die. And so she also has a pot on her head. It's a lot of fun. I would highly recommend the series if you are looking for a kind of fast paced, but still kind of fairy tale esque vibe type situation. And so I'm curious to see how this villain origin story kind of plays out and whether or not it feels like it was necessary. I feel like that's like the kind of danger that we run into a lot when it's this kind of continuation or prequel, or it's like, did it give me information that I needed? And I feel like more often than not, it's no, but I really had a good time with Six Crimson Cranes. And so I can't wait to see Hopefully she breaks that kind of curse. <laughs> so stupid. And makes it like really worthwhile. And then the next couple things are all continuing or completing series as well, because I told you that is the era. And so up next is The Art of Destiny by Wesley Chu. This is book two after The Art of Prophecy. This series is a lot of fun. It basically feels like a Jackie Chan movie in book form or like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, because Jackie Chan tends to be a little bit comedy, but like, this does have comedy in it as well, so that's why I referenced Jackie Chan, but it also has these kind of like really cinematic feeling fight scenes where we're running up like walls of cliffs and doing crazy like not realistic martial arts. And so I am trying to remember what happened in book one. I may need to go read like a synopsis somewhere to refresh myself, or maybe this book has a synopsis in the beginning. One can only hope. But this was released I think a month or two ago, The Art of Destiny. It The setup for book one is we are kind of following this chosen one. And then <laughs> he is very conceited, very like over the top. And we kind of have this good mentor mentee relationship with this older martial arts master lady. And so their dynamics are really fun. And I'm finding, kind of finding out more about the political situation in this world. And there's just some really like cinematic, beautiful, oh, the cats are wrestling today. <laughs> Um, there's some really cinematic places. And so there's like a sea of sand that they have to cross on boats. There's like the gigantic waving grasslands that are crazy and cool where they have these like almost moving citadel type things that move through these grasslands. Like it was really cool. And so I just, I want to know what happens next. Then I would like to get to The Midnight Kingdom by Tara Sim. This is book two following the City of Dusk, which I also have a spoiler-free review for that I will link in the places that you can check out if you feel so inclined. But this is a world where we're really focused on this kind of main city. And this main city has different quadrants in it. And each of the different quadrant quadrants has a different patron deity. So there's like the death quadrant where they have kind of more necromantic magic. And then Within these different places, there's the kind of like noble family and the noble family tends to be able to channel the magic of their patron deity of their section of the city. And so again, it just tickles that gods among us trope. This book in particular has that kind of new adult feel where the scope of the plot, the stakes, the world building all feels more like adult-ish, but the characters themselves are young and kind of reactionary and a little bit like difficult to get along with sometimes. And so it definitely fits into that new adult category. So just be aware before you check out this series that the characters may annoy you sometimes, but the plot is really cool, really fun. I love the Gods Among Us trope. And so it'll be interesting to see where we go next. I may need to go back and watch my own freaking review to remind myself of like what I thought of book one, because I read that like, I don't know, almost two years ago now. And then continuing with the continuations, I read Fourth Wing last month and I have thoughts. It is good in some ways and not so good in some ways for my personal tastes. And then just to like finish it off, I've been reading Iron Flame about halfway through right now. And so I would like to finish that. And then hopefully in the next week or so, you will see my thoughts on Fourth Wing. 
in my wrap up because I definitely have a lot of thoughts, <laughs> a lot of thoughts about a lot of the things that I read in November. There's a lot of mixed bag. So that'll be an interesting wrap up and it might be very long. So I may need to split it into multiple parts, but I digress. The last thing that I would like to get to in the month of December is Wrath by John Gwynn. This is book four and the conclusion to the Faithful and the Fallen series. Book three, especially towards the end, we had a lot of twists and some really gut-wrenching moments. And so just, I'm like nervous about what's gonna happen next and just curious about how we're gonna tie this all together. The Faithful and the Fallen series definitely is a series that takes its time to set up the characters and the world state and stuff. And it's not until the end of book two, beginning of book three, that I feel like we really start cooking with gas and having things really happening. But once things got going, I appreciated all the work that we spent kind of building up to those moments. I do feel like it could have been tightened up in places, but that's neither here nor there. And so I'm just, I feel like books three and four in this series are the ones that tend to make people scream about it from the rooftops. And so hopefully that also happens to me because obviously I would love to have a new favorite series, but we shall see. But that concludes the list of books that I'd like to get to in the month of December. Please let me know what are some books that you're excited to get to in December. If you just want to leave some kind of emoji, leave any kind of winter or holiday themed emoji that brings joy to you, whether that's going to be like a menorah or stars or Santa, Christmas trees or snowflakes, whatever screams Christmas, you leave an emoji of that. But I will speak to you again soon when I wrap up all of the books that I got to in November, but that will do it for today's video. So please do all the things like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you wanna see more bookish shenanigans like this from me. Other than that, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.